Um, as always, we have our new product newsletter. If you're logged into your account, you can choose that. We will never spam you. And it's one of our most successful newsletters because we get asked a lot, can you just email me when you get new products because you put in a lot of new products. Yeah. So here's some new products. Okay, starting off, we have this, uh, it's about six inch long 4JST cable. A uh, Systema cable, which is an upcoming series of boards, and this is the cable that we're going to use to connect them. Um, it's mysterious because it's called Stemma. What is it? What is it? What is, is it? It's it called Stemma. Gemma? It rhymes yes. with Gemma. But what is it maybe related? It, stem sounds like something that it, maybe it's a plant or maybe it's a curriculum. Yeah. So um, it's a kind of like a two or three year old project, but we'll get to it. Uh, maybe I'll show off a little bit on it's not out yet. So okay. this is Stemma cable. Very handy. You want to show it? Hey, look, it's like the picture. It's like the picture. It's just like the picture. Yeah. Cable, it's keyed. Mm. It's just black. It's got four wires. What does this cable do? What does it do? Okay. Lovely. All right. Yeah. Next up. It's a screen. We have an update to the resistive touch screen. So we used to carry this like Nintendo DS screen, and it was actually like literally used for Nintendo DSs, but you can't really get them anymore. And I was like, you know why? I don't like the connector was actually kind of hard to connect to. So we have a, a new resistive touch screen that we're carrying. Um, it's a little bit bigger, but what's nice about it is um, it comes with a better connector. So can you go to the overhead and I'll show it off? Yeah. So this one, it's, you know, it's about the same size, but it's nice. It's like a good screen size for like small projects. You can overlay it on some stuff and it comes with a one millimeter pitch connector, which is like way more reasonable. Like you still can't solder to it, but it's, it's not so small that you're just like, wow, it totally sucks to work with. And you can use it with like our um, AR111 uh, or our ST, STMPE uh, resistive touch controller. So you plug it in and like, now this is like a USB mouse. So it's very easy to use and um, works great with all our resistive touch stuff. And it kind of resistive touch panels basically standardized on this four pin connector. So now it can be used with all of our accessories. Um, and there's a little bit of like adhesive on the back which you can pull it off and you can like stick it to something more permanently. If I remove this, it would it would be sticky. So uh, overall, a nice a nice little add-on. Update product. Okay. Next up. Boop. What's this? This is a coming soon. It's an update to our NR52 Feather. This is the NR52 Feather Pro. We'll do another little video when it actually comes out, but. Um, we did finish the design. We just wanted to get them in the uh, get the ready in the store for when we finish the guide. Um, this is the, basically the same as our NR52 Feather, except instead of using an Arduino bootloader, it has Minute bootloader. And Minute is an Apache real-time operating system. It's very powerful uh, for people who want to not use Arduino. They want to use their own real-time operating system. They want threads. They want a lot of control over their hardware. Uh, they want profiling in real time. We have an app that does real-time profiling. You can see it here. It'll show you all your threads. It'll show your memory usage um, and your flash usage. It has an over-the-air bootloader. It's a, a really a very advanced professional Bluetooth uh, stack that's open source. So it's, it's called you know, Minute. It's so called Minute. So if people want to search for it and learn about it. M-Y-N-E-W-T. So it's like my like lizard, but also it's like Minute, like small. Ah, that's clever. It's a pun. Oh, it's clever because it's a lizard and it's tiny. A tiny lizard. Yeah. yeah. That's Anyways, cool. it's by Apache. Um, and so this is going to be a board that people can use if they want to use Minute. However, I will warn people, it's not for use with Arduino. It The bootloader is not Arduino compatible. Um, so if you want to use Minute, use this. If you want to use Arduino, use our other NRF52 Feather, which is a, a little bit less expensive because it doesn't have the SWD connector and the extra button. Uh, this is for advanced users who are like, hey, I'm totally going to use SWD to program and debug, and I'm going to use RTOS, and I'm going to use okay. the, this Minute system. Um, but for the professional mm, devs, sure. um, this is it. So it just looks exactly like our Feather, except it's got the SWD connector on there because it's going to be useful for those people and it has a, a dfu button over here which you can use as a user button and then i thought maybe i could try opening up the minute app to show it off give me a second one thing for sure you're not gonna have any ads no so it's not live yet oh hold on there's too many bluetooth apps that i have open you know it'd be good to speaking of the the yeah. pie hole thing i wonder if there's a site that has the most ads that people would know to test this stuff on. So let's see if this works. Anyways, okay. So, 
The only thing is I didn't test this. What do you think it's called? I think it would be called NRF 52. Let me, let me power cycle this. If it doesn't work, it's because I didn't actually. Yeah. Uh, What's the name of that app that you're using? It. This is a non-public app that we wrote called mm. uh, Minute. Yeah, it, it might not be. It might not be working. This so when we're shipping, app. you want to do? Oh, here a, it is. Oh, okay. There you go. I guess I just have to restart it. Mm. So yes, yeah, so this just shows you the um, the device, and so this is actually transmitting real time, um, like the details. I see it. So it's running our UART app, so you can communicate with our app, of course. And then you, know, you have an um, idle thread, a main thread, a Bailey UART thread. Wow, we made this app? Yeah. This is a nice app. Yeah, it's a wrapper for um, their stuff. And so you can like see all the, the deets for your um, minute device. And then you can load huh. images directly to you can do over the air programming. So it's very advanced. Wow. And you can see the stack usage as well. So, I mean, it's a very intense, it's a, you know, Cortex M4. Yeah. Uh, you know, DSP processor. So you can, it's got like a half a mega flash and like a quarter K of RAM or something. So you can, you can easily run a real time operating system on this and get your Bluetooth stack. So this is very handy for people who need to do that. Yeah. That's intense. Okay. But yeah, it's for, it's, you know, and again, there's no like, you can't use Arduino libraries. You'd have to kind of write your own code for it. So it's for more advanced pro users. Yeah. Well, we get asked all the time. Like, I'm crazy advanced. I want crazy product. This is crazy advanced. Okay. All right. So let's uh, go to the start of the show tonight besides you. It's the TPL 5111. Yay. Right. It's a reset enable timer. So this is uh, kind of a, a variant of the TPL 5110 that we've already had in stock. Um, this is a, a device that lets you make anything low power that you want to make low power, mm -hmm. if even if it doesn't have good sleep mode management. So for example, the ESP266 is a very popular processor, it's low cost, doesn't have a lot of sleep mode management. Um, you can sleep it, but it's like really weird to do so, and I've never had a lot of success with it. Um, you can do it, but it's, it's just like, it's hard to externally control it, and, and um, you have to like attach a pin to the reset and stuff. What's nice is this is standalone, and it acts as sort of like a separate watchdog timer. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the overhead, I can show it on the overhead. So this uh, board has the chip and then a potentiometer. And then when you twist the potentiometer, you can set a timing from about, you know, half a second up to two hours. I have it set up for about like, you know, five or six seconds right now. And it will um, toggle the enable pin on your board. So if you have an enable pin on your power supply, it'll, it'll toggle the enable pin and it will put it into uh, disabled mode and like low power. And then when the microcontroller project is done, it sends a signal and says, hey, I'm done. You can shut off the power. So it's basically external power management. And then, you know, it has a button so you can instantly turn it on if you don't want to wait for the cycle management. But it's kind of nice. It, you know, basically lets you uh, do your project um, with much lower power usage, a couple microamps or less without needing to do a complicated code, especially if you want to have it separate. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of nice and it just cycles it. It's just like a timer, cycle timer. That's cool. Because um, then you don't have to like... It's potentiometer controlled. You do it yeah. with a resistor. If you have a device that you're not going to re-engineer or change to basically do this, you can just add this. You just want something to turn on and off like once an hour. Yeah. This will do it for you. You don't need a real-time clock. You don't need extra complexity. Yeah, for IoT devices, this is yeah. kind of good because it'll just wake it up, do stuff, and then turn it off. It does. A, it's a yellow yeah, watchdog timer manager. Yeah. So I like this. Um, this one is the reset enable version, so you can use it with anything with a reset or enable line. The um, other version, you have to actually go in between the power. So there's two versions. One is mm. for if you have an enable pin and one you have to actually get between the power and it'll shut off power completely yeah so that one is like more intense yeah because it's off off it's off off this yeah. is just you know putting it into um, disable mode yeah but both have uses they're, they're very similar but they have different yeah uses, so I, I remember both. a long time ago someone had a project where these um devices were keeping track of like birds somewhere and like a nest and they were all over the place and no matter what the battery source was, they just wanted to turn it completely off and turn it back on. I this guess does it this for would you. do that. Yeah, it just it just completely disables yeah. and enables it. So very handy. Okay. Um, people have often needed something like this, and I never had it. And I'm like, hey, you know, because they're like, hey, well, I need low power, but it's like, if you're only building a couple, and you don't want to spend like ten hours like figuring out every sleep mode and just like trying to get as low power as possible. 
if this does the job for you, it's like five bucks, yeah. you just add it in and then you're done. Yeah, I guess if you want to spend years testing and coding, you could do it. Or in this case, maybe this hardware thing might just do it this for you. This might just do it for you. And like yeah. I said, some chips don't have a lot of yeah. uh, low power support. So this will do it for you. Okay. Externally. Turn any device into a low power devo device. Yeah. All right. Good. It's very good for IoT stuff. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, does new products. Yay. You're done. Good work. Thank you.